Hello again everybody and today another talk about Vindolanda. Every now and again something comes along which makes you look differently at the world uh, from how you have done before. Uh, there's been lots of things in the virus crisis which have done exactly that and the archaeological site at Vindolanda has something in common with that too. It's a very unusual site as we noted uh, yesterday and that is because part of it is waterlogged and anoxic. There's no oxygen in there because parts of it are just uh, sort of sealed, uh, sealed under layers of uh, building work and uh, concrete and they uh, just they don't have decomposition which needs oxygen. So there's been a number of things found at Vindolanda which wouldn't have been found anywhere else in the Empire. Uh, I mentioned yesterday some wooden writing tablets with uh, ink on wood, uh, more of those in a little while, but there's also uh, some scraps of leather. Now, as lockdown has closed the site and uh, excavations, new excavations are not currently possible, re there's been quite a lot of reassessment of existing finds. Amongst this uh, was a bag of what was thought to be cut off leather fragments. Uh, and uh, these were first found in uh, 1993, so they've been preserved since then, but not really looked at all that closely. Well, recent re-examination of these has revealed one charming little detail, and this is a mouse. Dating from the early 2nd century AD, uh, it's a shape of uh, a mouse. It's uh, life-size, uh, life so it's just a couple of inches long, and it's carved out of the leather so that when it's on the floor, it looks really like a mouse. Not a cartoon, exaggerated Disney-style mouse, but just looks like a real mouse. Now, we don't really know whether this was uh, done as a practical joke uh, to get uh, people who are m uh, musophobes or murophobes uh, to shriek or whether it was a child's plaything. But it's a very unusual thing um, and uh, it's just the site of uh, Vindolanda's uh, an anoxic area uh, that has preserved that. So amidst the stories of battles and politics, it's very easy to lose sight of these little everyday nuggets uh, which take us to the daily life of people long ago. I'm indebted to my former pupil Dominic Healy for drawing my attention to this today. Alongside this charming detail are the everyday details revealed in the handwritten tablets, letters uh, to and from the residents of Vindolanda. These range from dismissive assessments of, Britain, uh, of the local Britons, uh, as this extract says, uh, the Britons are unprotected by armour. There are very many cavalry. The cavalry do not use swords, nor do the wretched Britons, the Britunculi, mount in order to throw javelins. So uh, that's a, a slightly uh, superior attitude to these wretched Britons, so presumably written by uh, a Roman looking down on them. Uh, then we get a letter uh, which seems to be from a mother, uh, which has been an enclosure to, uh, to her, something she sent to her son, uh, who is serving uh, in Vindolanda. I have sent you some pairs of socks from Satua, two pairs of sandals and two pairs of underpants. Uh, and then there's some bits that are unreadable. Uh, share the, presumably share these with a uh, load of names and then all your messmates with whom I pray that you live in the greatest good fortune. Well, that's a slightly uh, worried mother perhaps uh, worrying about her son serving on drafty guard duty uh, near Hadrian's Wall so he needs some uh, extra underpants. Then there's uh, this extract uh, which is a slightly lonely maybe plaintive sounding invitation to a birthday party. Claudia Severa to her Lepidina greetings. On the 11th of September, sister, for the day of the celebration of my birthday, I give you a warm invitation to make sure that you come to us to make the day more enjoyable for me by your arrival. Give my greetings to your Kerialis. My Ilias and my little son send him their greetings. I shall expect you, sister. Farewell, sister, my dearest soul, as I hope to prosper. So, sounds like she's a bit lonely up there uh, in the wilds of Northumberland. And then uh, a little bit from a slightly longer letter, uh, uh, slightly better preserved, um, and this guy sounds quite impatient. Uh, this is from Octavius to his brother Candidus. Greetings. 
The hundred pounds of sinew from Marinus I will settle up. From the time when you wrote about this matter, he's not even mentioned it to me. I've several times written to you that I have bought about 5,000 modi of ears of grain, on account of which I need cash. Unless you send me some cash, at least 500 denarii, the result will be I shall lose what I've laid out as a deposit, about 300 denarii, and I shall be embarrassed. So I ask you, send me some cash as soon as possible. The hides which you write about are at Cataractonium. Write that they be given to me and the wagon about which you write. And write to me what is with that wagon. I would have already been to collect them, except that I didn't care to injure the animals while the roads are so bad. Well, there we are with a man keen to get his hands on the cash, cash on delivery, and he's also worried about potholes. How very modern. All of these things, the letters, the leather mice, the brooch I mentioned, this beautiful silver brooch I mentioned yesterday, show us a familiar and yet rather remote side of Roman life.